Hi farmhouse friends and welcome back to the farmhouse. Today I have a real treat for you. We are going to divide my perennials. I get a lot of questions about dividing perennials. In fact, I had started the project just to get it done because it's fall and I wanted to get ahead of things. And while I started this project, I had a lot of questions come in about dividing perennials. And so I decided that since so many of us were in the same boat, I was going to go ahead and pick up the cameras. So I actually had gotten started before I started filming and hopefully I have some before footage to throw in here to show you what it looked like before. It had really gotten out of hand. I couldn't tell what was flowers, what was weeds, and so it was surely in need of dividing. In fact, it's been on my schedule for two years now and I had started it in the spring and thought I was going to get to it and did not, but it is done now and I'm happy to bring you along. So let's get started. Here is some footage from the front porch makeover. This was the before shot. And you could see here that it was really out of control. Keep in mind, this had a couple more months to grow and get even more out of control. And it may sound pretty drastic, but I just got out the riding lawnmower and I simply mowed it all down. And you can see I raked it all out. It did create kind of a mess and I raked it all out. But if you're cutting or you're mowing or even using a weed whip, you are going to make a mess because you just have to get in there. And this just allowed me to see what was going on. It was the easiest, fastest way for me. You could see too that from this angle, I had to mow towards the porch for this side. And I did spread a lot of debris on the porch, which I have to clean up. This side was simpler because I was able to just throw it all out into the grass. You can see at both ends, however, I couldn't get up close. I didn't want to cut down that lavender tree bush plant. It isn't good to cut them all the way down. And now I'm at ground zero and I can kind of see what's going on. I can clearly make out clumps of plants. And this area here just looks like a bunch of grass. That's where some of it spread. Now this is a hosta and over here I can see the ground where there was nothing planted. There's another hosta here and it's easy to see where things are. This happens to be a clump of lilies and back here I see salvia. I can identify that and this is just some black-eyed Susan that spread and it's low. I couldn't get up there with the mower. I can keep that and divide it into smaller plants. Here I have some Autumn Joy sedum. This was not done blooming but that's okay. Everything else here was done blooming before I cut it down. The benefit of starting this project in the spring is everything will be low to the ground and you won't have this mess but fall is the other great time to do this. Spring or fall either one are a great time to do this when it's cool and especially an overcast day when rain is in the forecast. Now I'm going to get started on those areas that I couldn't get to with the mower and I'm just going to do it by hand. It's a lot smaller now so I can. I want to talk a minute here about Maggie. She turned nine this spring and I was really worried about her. She just wouldn't leave the sofa. She used to love to go upstairs and look out our bedroom window and see for miles and bark at squirrels and deer and all that and she used to go outside and play and she wasn't doing any of that and I was really worried I took her to the vet and we did a whole lot of tests and she was really healthy but she just didn't want to move and I talked to the vet and she said you probably need some cosequin for her and I will link what we found down below it made such a difference in such a short time that we have it on auto ship and I will link that down below if you have one of your best friends that is just not doing as well as they used to physically because they've gotten old and they have some pain this stuff worked wonders and I love it and this is not sponsored this is just me sharing now for those of you who are cutting down this is what it looks like I just grab 
a chunk of the plant and I take my pruning shears and I cut off about three inches from the ground. I leave about three inches. That's about right. And from here on out, I know this is all sounding very barbaric. If you are new to gardening and your plants are your babies, this is going to seem very extreme and cruel. How can you do this? But trust me, this is normally the way it's done. Your plants will rebound and they will thank you. They will come back better than ever, I promise. So once I have this all cut down, I go back over it and um, because part of this was cut with the mower and part of it by hand, I just want to make it all about three inches I want it all about the uniform height. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to dig up our plants. We're just going to go in. Now, the goal is to get as much of the root as possible. It does traumatize them to cut their roots, so we're going to be doing some root cutting. But as I go around the outside, I want to get as much of the root as possible so it's still intact. We're just going to go around the outside. Now, this plant had gotten so big that the inside had died out and that's why there's that big circle in the middle that's not normal and like i said i had wanted to do this for over two years and had not gotten to it and therefore you could tell that the plants they're not suffering they're still beautiful but it's best if they get divided and then they can continue to grow and prosper and thrive and so that's what we're doing now we're getting them broken up and out of the ground so we can divide them and I'll show you how to do that that is our next step just going to go ahead and take my shovel you want to use a sharp tool here a spade or another sharp object and you're just gonna slice right straight through as quickly and forcefully as possible cut those roots and divide that plant now it's gonna be okay it will bounce back I promise I've done this for years but the quicker and more forceful the slice the easier it cuts through and the less damage it does overall. Now this size doesn't matter. You can make your plant any size. I just made mine this size and I ended up getting six plants out of this one plant. Now you can see here I'm submerging them in my pools of water and if you are going to do this and you're not going to use a pool you want to keep those roots wet. So you want to find something to put them in. You don't have to fully submerge them. You just want to keep them wet and if they're not fully submerged like mine were you want them in a shady area just because you don't want those roots to dry out. That will really shock your plant and we want them to experience the least amount of shock as possible. So I'm just going on and continuing with all the plants that I want to keep. I thought that was the easiest way to do this. Instead of digging up everything at this point, I am just digging up the plants that I know I want to keep. And so I'm working on here another set of hosta. And you can see this one is not as bad. It still had live in the middle, but I'm doing it the same way. I'm just going around the outer and inner edges and I'm just splitting it up. Now I have two pools completely full. This pool is the hosta and the autumn joy sedums and the other one is the black eyed susan lilies and anything else that i had and this is what i'm left with now you can see i have some weeds some grass 
a lot of big holes in the ground. So I opted to get out my old trusty dusty rototiller. This bad boy is at least 20 years old. And every year I'm like, okay, we're going to get a new one. This one's old, but it still keeps going. Now this one's been pretty hard on my body the last couple years. And a lot of times my nephews or grandsons or my husband will run it for me, but I still enjoy the exercise and I still enjoy the satisfaction of getting it turned over. So I still use it and yeah, I should probably downgrade or upgrade to a smaller one, but now the soil here is all soft. It's all tilled up and it's going to be a lot easier for me to work with. So now I've gotten out my rake and you can see we're losing daylight here. This is the end of Friday and we're losing some daylight, but this is a good technique. It's some, an important step is I'm going in and just raking. Raking is pulling up those weeds, getting them out of there. It's leveling off the soil. It's helping me be able to see the shape of the land. So this is an important step. And once I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and just continue to get any loose things out of there. Those weeds, any debris, any old plant material, working on both sides until I have it nice and even. This is why this step is so important because you can see here all this old plant material. This is old plants that um, had just spread too much and weeds and debris and you really want to get this out and I'm just using very light strokes pulling off what's on top and not digging down with my rake. I'm just kind of sweeping so to speak and just pulling that all off and I'm going to show you here if you leave these things lay in your garden you can see they all have roots on them still. If you leave them lay there they will put their little feelers right back in the soil and you're just transplanting weeds and plants if they have a root on there it's best to get it out so you won't have so much work to do later now those that didn't sweep right out anything that didn't get tilled up by the tiller and there wasn't much at all there was very little that I had to go back and pull but that's what I did I pulled it all out now this area this used to be a cement window well in fact by my left hand you can see the concrete I couldn't get the rototiller up there so this was one area that I had to do by hand but using my color packer worked great and that was in my favorite tool video from the spring if you didn't see that and if you're looking to get your garden tools on sale and you want to know which ones are best or do some Christmas shopping for um, your loved ones or any shopping, graduates, any time of the year, Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays, uh, make sure you watch that video because there's a lot of good information. Now, as you can see, I wanted to go back and redefine the beds. I had let these beds grow over the last few years and I hadn't done much shaping and this seemed like the perfect time to go ahead and make sure I outlined it the way I wanted it to be. I pulled that soil out so there's a nice defined area where when I get ready to mulch or stone or whatever I'm going to do here, there is a cut back from the yard and that's going to stop the grass from growing. And look how far we've come. Look at this. It just looks great now. So my soil is leveled and it's clean of debris. And now I'm getting ready to put the plants back in the ground, the ones that I'm saving here. And so I'm going to show you also a in-depth way to replant them, um, any plant um, that you're going to be planting. But for now, I'm just going to start putting them back in the ground. And then I want to let you know that also I didn't use very many plants in this. I just put them back the way I did several years ago when we first put the landscaping in and I had a lot of plants left over but I did put it on Facebook. I had family and friends and some 
uh, one of our gardening pages here in our community and I had lots of people come and take these plants home and put them in their garden and so these plants are now happily planted in other gardens and doing well and that is great that other people got to use them as well. <music> So now I just want to show you how I plant. Now I've softened up the soil in the hole itself so that the ground is very soft and free for these new roots to go right back in. I'm spread out the roots a little bit so they can find the soil and just start digging in. Now ideally we want our roots to touch soil everywhere. Now if you are planting in the spring, this would be a good time before you put the plant in to feed your plant. However, it is fall and we do not feed in the fall. Our plants are done with their blooming cycle and they're going to rest. So we don't want to feed and encourage growth. We just want them in the soil. We can come back and fertilize in the spring and that is okay. Give them some good food to start. But if you're doing this in the spring, now is the time to go ahead and do that. So I'm just tucking in that soil everywhere, pushing it in to make sure that all of my roots are touching soil. Also, I wanted to mention if your plants were not soaking in water, you also probably want to use your hose or your water container and put water in the hole so that the roots remain wet for a while while they're getting themselves resituated. One more thing that I do is around the root area of the plant or the drip line, I go ahead and make the circle and I make sure the soil is nice and level and that there is a ring so when it rains, the water can stand in there and go straight down to the root and not run off. Now I'm just going to go through and continue the process with all the plants on both sides of the porch. working out back the other day I have a small area where I used to put plants to hold them while I was deciding what to do with them I found this long forgotten sedum and look at the color on this I love the rich fall tone of this plant and so I went to work cleaning it up it had been long forgotten like it was growing in some weeds so I'm going to clean it up pull out those weeds, pull out the old canes that from it where it bloomed before and get it ready. I'm going to go ahead and divide this one as well. I'm going to cut down these flowers. Now it's not done blooming, but it will be okay. And I'm going to use these flowers for a cut flower arrangement. I think they're going to be beautiful. After that, I'm just taking it all the way down, just like I did the other ones, making it about three inches tall and then it will be ready to divide and plant. So here I am with my shovel. I'm just going to do the same thing, find a nice center in this, and I'm just going to give it that good quick thrust and break it in half. Then I will have two plants from one, and I could go smaller. You could get four plants out of this, but for where I'm planting them, I think these two are going to be the perfect size. And of course, Everything's planted and here we have someone in there where he's not supposed to be and he just thinks he's all that and he's not and he's going to get in trouble. But once I got him out of the way, I did take out that one lavender plant that had been choked out by the other plants and I had this one growing in a pot and obviously it was getting pot bound. It needed to get out of the pot and it's not the same size as the one that's growing there but after the dormant winter season and this one picks up in the spring, I think it will for sure match the other one. This one here that you see in the lower right hand corner, I think they'll be pretty compatible and they'll be pretty well matched. I can trim this one down a little bit this year 
and it will be fine for the spring. Now I'm just going back and giving everything a good soaking in. And I did take a scrubber and scrub the porch. I didn't film that. But now I'm just making sure that I've gotten all the debris that I put up there off of there. And now I'm going to start mulching. Mulch is so important. I didn't have this garden mulch, which was one of my first problems. And, um, well, it was a long time ago, but it just completely deteriorated. And then the weeds took over. But as I said, I started this project in the spring and I went and picked up a whole wagon load of mulch. And it had sat, I kept it covered, but had still gotten moisture and wet. So my bags were wet. Part of it had already started to compost. It was raining while I'm filming this. You can't see the rain, but it is raining. So my bags were slippery and the bags were falling apart. And the mulch, it was, it was a challenge to get this down there. But I did it. And it look at this, guys. It's just coming together so well. Here is our finished product of the whole division and replanting of my landscape in the spring this is going to be stunning i promise you uh please come back please subscribe so you don't miss any videos and you don't miss this in the spring thanks so much for coming along guys and enjoy the rest of this video I hope this video was informative for you. I hope you learned a lot. I hope this gives you the courage to get out your shovel or your lawnmower and divide those perennials. Make your garden area look great. Thanks so much for coming along, guys. Until next time, be blessed, be safe, and I'll see you soon.